Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IIT JVLM PRS and AP Physics with Amparish. And today again I have brought an interesting problem. This was uh, asked by one of my students who was facing some problem in this. So uh, without much ado, let me straight away get into this problem. This is uh, INPHO 2018 problem 4. Uh, so let's see. Okay, here's the problem. An R glass is placed on a weighing scale. Initially all the sand of mass M0 uh, kg in the glass is held in the upper reservoir ABC. So this is the reservoir ABC and we have all the sand uh, somewhere over here. Okay. Uh, and the mass of the glass alone is M kg. So the mass of the glass part is capital M. At, the t, at t equal to 0 the sand is released. It exits the upper reservoir at constant rate lambda kg per second. Okay. So the sand is falling at lambda kg per second. That's constant. Okay where m is the mass of the sand in the upper reservoir at time small t uh, seconds okay uh, dm by dt so this was supposed to be dm by dt is equal to so uh, okay uh, this is dm by dt so forgot to write here let me just write here this lambda is dm by dt okay dm by dt rate of fall okay where m is the mass of the reservoir in the uh, upper uh, mass of the sand in the upper reservoir at uh, t second okay Assume that the speed of the falling sand is zero at the neck of the glass and after it falls through a constant height h, it instantaneously comes to rest on the floor de of the R glass. So you can assume that uh, it falls through a height h and instantaneously comes to rest at the floor. So don't think that it will form a heap and all those things. Uh, just assume that it just uh, reaches and it just forms a heap uh, on the floor level. Okay. Uh, through a constant height h, it instantaneously comes to rest on the floor de of the R glass. Obtain the reading on the scale for all times uh, t greater than 0. Make a detailed plot of reading versus time. Okay, so if you want, you can give it a try. I'll get into my analysis right away. So let's see how to do this one. So uh, the entire process of falling sand can be divided into three phases. So let me straight away show you uh, through the figure. So this is phase one when the sand has started falling, but still the first grain has not reached the floor yet. Okay. So what will happen in this case when the sand has already started falling. So this mass has uh, already started reducing and there is no impulsive force on the floor yet. So whatever is the mass over here uh, in the stream that much uh, uh, that much mg will be uh, that much mg will not be acting on the uh, on the uh, uh, this uh, weighing scale right. So that means what as the sand keeps on falling and until it reaches the floor the uh, you expect that graph should be reducing uh, line linearly the, because there is less mg uh, acting on the uh, this uh, pan okay then what is the phase 2 phase 2 is once the uh, the grains start uh, reaching the floor okay so then what happens the falling grains they start exerting an impulsive force on the floor so what is acting the force acting is the the mg of the sand plus the r glass and plus the impulsive force of the uh, sand that is colliding with the uh, floor okay and what will be the third phase third phase will be when the uh, top chamber is completely empty and uh, however there is still some stream left in the air which is colliding so here again there will be impulsive force and you can say that uh, net weight is at every instant of time the net weight is nothing but the impulsive force plus the uh, weight of the sand plus r glass okay uh, that is there in the upper chamber chamber in all the three cases in general we can say that at every instant the normal reaction that is the reading of the scale is nothing but summation of the impulsive force if it is if it is acting the so summation of impulsive force plus weight of sand in the top chamber and plus weight of the r class so that is what uh, the weighing machine is going to show you at every instant of time in principle right so and now we just need to calculate this okay so that's what i've written here the entire process of sand falling can be divided into three phases. The sand has started falling, but the stream has not yet touched the floor. Second phase is stream has touched the floor. However, top chamber is not yet empty. And third phase is top chamber is empty. Some sand is there in the stream and the stream is about to end. Okay. So uh, phase one, as I told you that uh, weight is linearly decreasing as the more and more sand is getting collected in air uh, and uh, at general time, how much sand would have uh, 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 collected in the air in the stream that will be lambda t so uh, what will be the uh, function over here so that's what you see it's a decreasing function initially m0 plus m g is acting uh, so uh, here we have just shown the instead of weight i've just shown the mass uh, because 
you can always calibrate the uh, the balance in terms of mass instead of uh, mg so initial reading is m0 plus m and then it is linearly decreasing that kind of graph we expect so what's the expression exact expression i'm going to derive shortly okay so let's see phase one so considering the fbd in phase one excluding the stream by vertical force balance what do we get so mg plus m0 minus lambda t into g so wh why lambda t because this much this much sand has been falling for a time t so this uh, mass in the stream should be lambda t and it is not applying any force on the rest of the system okay so rest of the system is the this top top uh, portion and the floor and the are uh, the the glass portion right so this part of stream is not applying any force okay so uh, mg plus m not, this should have been uh, in fact g i have taken outside so there was no need of g over here so m plus m not uh, minus lambda t uh, into G is the normal reaction. Okay, here again I have made the same mistake. So let me correct it. So it is M plus M naught uh, minus lambda T times G. So that's the uh, that's the reading uh, in the first phase. Okay. Now this expression is valid until how much time? This expression is valid until stream hits the bottom. Let us say. Uh, it takes time t1 to reach from point c to uh, the floor so if h is the height you know that time of falling for any grain is root 2 h by g so t1 is root 2 h by g so this is the you can see so normal reaction decreases linearly till this time okay and that's what i've reflected here in this graph finally i'll show you the entire graph here once so you can see that uh, there's a linear decrease and this time t1 is under root 2 h1 by g so this is the curve for the phase 1 now let's look at the phase 2 okay so phase 2 so now uh, you see uh, the sand is falling and uh, the floor is arresting the momentum of the sand so sand is falling with some momentum and that momentum is getting lost as soon as the uh, the grains of the sand hit the floor so if lambda is the rate of fall so you know that in t uh, t time how much mass falls lambda dt is the amount of mass that falls on the floor and it falls with the velocity v so momentum getting finished in a dt time is lambda dt into v so this is the uh, momentum finished in time dt so rate of momentum lost is this you need to divide by uh, dt right so that is lambda dt into v divided by dt and rate of uh, loss of momentum is the force that is impulsive force that is applied on the floor of the pan right okay so uh, f is lambda uh, and v is what v is under root 2 gh right because it started with zero velocity and after falling through height h it should be uh, root 2 gh so lambda root 2 gh is the downward force right so once again uh, i can apply the vertical force balance so what do i get so uh, this much sand must be equal to lambda not t1 right because t it took t1 time for sand to reach from there to here and t1 was found to be under root 2 h by g okay so and this is uh, so so total uh, total uh, weight excluding the stream is what m plus m naught minus lambda t1 right so this and plus the impulsive force that is acting downward that is lambda root 2 gh and this this should be equal to the normal reaction from the weighing machine okay so so uh, and if you put the value of t1 see t1 was what t1 was under root 2 h by g so you multiply uh, under root 2 h by g over here and there's a g over there and there's then an another lambda root 2 gh so if you simplify this lambda root 2 gh will just cancel off with lambda t1 once you put t1 is equal to under root 2 h by g okay so so it turns out n is simply m plus m naught into g okay so okay so this is the uh, uh, so so during the phase 2 of the uh, falling of sand the normal reaction becomes constant okay even though sand is falling it uh, it it gives the, the you can say that weighing machine gives the correct reading of the r glass the total weight of the r glass so that is m plus m naught into g okay now this process will end at time t2 when the top chamber just becomes empty so this will continue uh, and uh, until the top chamber is completely empty and how much time will it take so m naught was the mass and lambda was the rate of fall of mass so time taken to empty the top chamber is simply m naught by lambda and I'm calling this time as T2. So this graph is valid till T2. And that's what you can see here. I'll enlarge this one. So you are having a constant weight M0 plus M uh, till time T2. From T1 to T2, the reading remains constant. Okay. Now coming to the phase 3. Okay. 
so phase 3 is so the time for the entire process to complete is the time for emptying the top chamber plus the time for uh, stream portion to fall uh, fall down completely okay so uh, top chamber gets empty in a time m0 by lambda and the stream falling time from uh, uh, this uh, once the last grain escapes from there it will take another under root 2h by g time so this is the total time for uh, uh, the entire process to complete so the phase 3 will complete at this time this clock time starting from initial moment okay and uh, now what about the normal reaction during this uh, period so now between times t2 and t3 the fbd is somewhat similar to phase 2 except that the accumulated weight on the floor would increase by an amount delta m is equal to lambda t minus t2 so uh, let me explain this statement nicely so uh, t2 was the time when the top chamber had just become uh, uh, completely empty okay so and after that suppose uh, uh, t time t is the total clock time so additional time elapsed after the top chamber became empty the additional time is t minus t2 right and in this time how much mass would have accumulated on the uh, bottom uh, floor extra so extra mass accumulated would be lambda into the uh, additional time that has passed right so this is the extra mass that is uh, that has uh, accumulated on the bottom pan and this should also be the amount by which the normal reaction should increase why because the thrust force f is still the same that is lambda into uh, root 2j so this thrust force is still the same you can see uh, okay here the thrust force this f is still uh, calculated the same way as we calculated in phase 2 so this is lambda into root 2gh but uh, there is an additional mass uh, i mean this much part of the stream is now finished so this much mass uh, is also acting the, the weight of this much is also acting so that should be added to the answer of part 2 so in part 2 we had m plus m not g but now we need to add the this uh, the, this this much weight extra so that's what i've done so that that delta m is lambda into t minus t2 so accordingly the normal reaction would increase by an amount delta m into g where delta m is this much mass so that's what i have now put the values of uh, t2 t2 value is m0 by lambda and if you simplify this uh, uh, you get uh, uh, th this is a linear function you can see this is a linearly increasing function right in time t you can see and uh, what is the maximum value of this so you put t is equal to t3 here okay so this linearly increases between t2 and t3 and attains maximum value at t3 and n max is then m plus m0 g plus uh, lambda into instead of this you put t3 and t3 was uh, found to be m0 by lambda plus root 2h by g that was time for emptying the top chamber plus time of the falling of the stream so this is your n max okay and now we can see all information if we uh, plot on the graph it looks like this right so initially it is a linear decrease then it is a constant weight and then there is a linear increase and after that what will happen once the stream is completely finished once again it will become flat graph right because now not, nothing is happening the sand just stays put so weighing machine will show the true uh, weight of the uh, sand plus the uh, glass okay so that was my analysis for this problem hope you enjoyed the analysis if you did uh, like the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you might be using for uh, networking with them and most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what uh, is the main motivation uh, that keeps me going for uh, this channel thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all. Thank you.